Come on in, everyone. Come on in because we're doing something special today, y'all. We are doing a throwback. We are going back to family or fiance season two. And, I, you know, I really can't even call it a throwback because I've actually never seen the show, y'all. So maybe it's a throwback to some of y'all, but it is a throwback because it ain't new. Um, this season two I'm going to be looking at because you know why I'm looking at season two? Because it's free on YouTube. <laughs> It's free on YouTube, so I will definitely leave the link down in the description box. So if you guys want to watch along with me, you can. Um, I couldn't find episode one, y'all, but it really doesn't matter because once I started watching this show, I realized it's not continuous. Each episode is like a completely different episode. So who cares that I couldn't find episode one? So we're going to start with season two, episode two, and I'm going to be coming reviewing these shows because... um. I'm not really watching anything else, y'all, <laughs> to be honest with you. I haven't found anything else that I'm interested in. And I landed upon this show, and I thought it was interesting. So maybe some of y'all have already watched it, and so you can come join me for the conversation. You can add uh, your two cents down in the comments as I add my two cents here on the YouTube. Or if you've never watched it, you can watch alongside with me. And uh, each week, I'm going to try to watch at least one episode. I am, depending on how my uh, life goes. You know how sometimes life be life. And I know y'all understand when life be life. -ing. But I watched season two, episode two, and it was with Kim and David. Kim and David. So anyway, y'all don't know the premise of the show. The premise of the show is you got two people coming together. And obviously, their families uh, don't like one of the mates. Or I don't know. So, uh, you know, they go to this little counseling session. I think before, Yana Van Zandt used to do it. But now they got this new lady. Why do I want to call her Tamika? I really don't think that's her name. So I'm messing it up. But she kind of, she now, I think she took over for Yana. I think Yana maybe used to do it a long time ago. Um, I wish I would have watched it back then. I used to watch some episode of Yana. But I used to watch the Fix My Life. Fix My Life. I used to watch that. That was good. Uh, but in the event, this, uh, a, a, she's a therapist, a relationship coach, relationship counselor, family counselor. I'm not for sure. Uh, but she comes in and she tries to bridge the gap. At the end of the show, everybody got to figure out, are you going to choose your family or are you going to choose your fiance? <laughs> Which one are you going to choose? I know everybody always talks about choose family, family first. <laughs> Sometimes, though, your family is your worst enemy, y'all. Can anybody co-sign on that? Can anybody co-sign that sometimes some people in your family be your worst enemies <laughs> but in this episode i'm gonna talk about a couple of things y'all i'm gonna talk about the obvious and the not so obvious because i know what the narrative was for this episode they really want to say that david was the bad cop he was the bad parent he was the bad person in the episode and kim was the good person and i will agree on this uh, david needs a lot of work <laughs> He did. But, you know, he has some breakthroughs on this show. I was proud to see that he has some breakthroughs. But for you, those of you who didn't watch the show, I'm going to tell you this. So David and Kim, here's their love story, because I like to start off with the love story. They met at work. They met at work, y'all. Um, they say in meeting a person, I think it's something like 30% of people meet their love interest at work. But, I mean, dang, we spend so much time at work. I could see it if you're single, but... Some people don't want to dip, dip, don't want to dip their toe where they work. Some people do, some people don't. But the two of them, Kim and David, they met at work. They both work at um, a school somewhere. She's a, a she's a te no, he's a teacher. He teaches PE and he teaches like another like probably discipline class, academic class, and then she's also a school counselor. And um, they love stories kind of quick, like within like I don't know four or five months. David was proposing. David was like, I'm in love. You the angel of my life. Love at first sight. I want to be with you. I want to get married to you. He proposed within six months. They got engaged. But here we are four years later and ain't no marriage. <laughs> four year engagement. So a quick engagement, but then no marriage didn't come. So uh, why didn't the marriage come after four years? Well, here we are. That's why we here at Family and Fiance because it turns out that um, Kim's family, who is pretty much her two sons, don't like David. <laughs> they don't like him. 
So then he, this here is like an everyday problem, right? How do you blend families when this is like your second marriage, third marriage, or I don't know. They never really did say if Kim and David had been married before. We do know that Kim has two sons. One's 20 and one's 15. And David has five kids. So I don't know if either one of them married any of the uh, fathers or um, mothers. I can't tell, though, that Kim's kids are by two different men because the, the sons look just completely different. And I, I believe, I'm pretty sure that they have two different fathers. Now, I don't know if she was married to the fathers, but it was something interesting in this whole conversation that makes me think that the fathers are not that involved in the children's life. Because when uh, the whole thing going on with Kim and David is that David is really disciplined. He's ex-military, you know, so he's coming in and he's trying to run things with the sons and the sons are like, I ain't having it. I ain't having it. That's what the sons are saying. They're not having it. So he's all ex-military. He coming in. He trying to be the disciplinarian. The sons ain't having it. They mad at their mama. Uh, because their mama is, I guess, choosing, the, they feel like the mom is choosing David over them. Um, but I'm going to say, like I said, I'm going to talk about the obvious and the not so obvious. The obvious part is David is dead wrong, of course. You should not be coming into no family with no woman and her two sons and trying to rule some boys that ain't even your kids. Like, that's dead wrong. And second of all, I'm going to say this. Um... David gave us a little clue that when he first started pushing up on um, Kim, he asked her out. She said in order for her to go out with him, she needed to find, I guess, a babysitter for her son. Now, that would mean at the time, right, if you think about it, one of her sons is 20 years old. And uh, now we know that they've been engaged for four years, which means at the time that he asked her out, the oldest son was 16. And then the youngest one now is 15, which means four years ago he was 11. So you got a 16-year-old and you got an 11-year-old. And what Kim said was, in order for me to go out with you, David, on a date, I got to find a babysitter for my son, which is interesting because if you have a 16-year-old and you have an 11-year-old, what Kim is kind of telling us is her 16-year-old wasn't responsible enough that she felt that she could leave her 11 year old home with him now that's a that's telling right because i know the story wants to be told that david is this strict disciplinarian that's the story that's what the cameras want to tell us that's what the show is all about david and all his issues and we're going to get to his issues but what they really failed to overlook was how did kim become so attracted to david so here's why I'm going to talk about the not so obvious because we already, the show talks about the obvious with David so much, but the not so obvious is why is Kim so happy with David? Now Kim's not happy with David because you know, her sons don't like him. She doesn't like that. Of course not. But she, she likes David. She's in love with David. And what I think about Kim, let me tell you what I think about Kim is here is Kim who, I don't know, she looks like maybe she's in her third, well, she can't be her 30s. Her son is 20 years old, so more than likely she's in her 40s. You know, black don't crack. She looks good for her, whatever age, you know, if she's in her 40s, she looks good. But she's obviously in her 40s. And um, you know what the manosphere tells women? The manosphere tells women that when you have two kids by two different baby daddies, who's going to want to come in and marry you? That's what they tell you that your chances of getting married, finding a man who's going to love you and accept your two kids and boys at that is slim to none. That's what the manosphere tells you. They tell you that men don't want to step into boys' lives. Okay, so think about all the manosphere telling Kim this story. The other part I think about Kim is I think Kim is a sweet person. I think she's a very, very empathetic and kind and caring person. And I think that's the way that she mothered her boys. But here's the problem, if you want to call it a problem. I think Kim also knew that her sons were missing a little bit of discipline. It's not saying that her kids were not nice. It's not saying that her kids aren't good kids. But the fact that she says, I would need a babysitter to watch my 11-year-old son 
when I have a 16 year old son and I can't even go on a date for two to three hours tells me something about what she thinks about the responsibility of her 16 year old at that time. And here we are four years later still having the problem. So what I think, I, th I know all the kids are blaming, you know, um, David for coming in the mom's life. But I think Kim invited him into her life. And I think she invited him into her life because what she saw in David was something that she didn't have. And that was the ability to put her foot down. More than likely, she leads with her heart. And sometimes when you always lead with your heart, you feel as if you're not able to take those stands when you need to. And so what Kim invited David in her life to do was to play bad cop. She's the good cop. He's the bad cop. So has David muscled his way into this area? No, he was invited. Not only do we know he was invited, we know that what Kim did was Kim didn't really tell the children how much he was invited in because there was a big old kerfuffle about how David was disciplining the boys. And they talk about this scenario where David takes the door off the hinges of one of the boys' room because I think maybe the boy was supposed to clean his room. He didn't clean it. David's old school military, that's old school taking hinges off doors. That's old school when kids used to close doors and lock doors. And you say, you don't close no door or lock no door in this house where you don't pay no bills. And the parent comes along and takes the hinges off the door. That is old school. New school is gentle parenting. New school is knocking on the door with a ring camera saying, can I come in? <laughs> so I think Kim was the gentle parent, the kind, caring, loving parent. And I think what she saw in David was she wanted some of that in her life and she wanted some of that for her boys. But here's the problem. She didn't tell her boys that. She didn't tell her boys, hey, I don't have a problem with everything that David is doing because she admitted that when David took the hinges off the door, she agreed with it. She agreed with it because you know what? She probably didn't know what to do. She has probably been up her wits end because she's probably wanted to instill some more discipline and she didn't know how to do it because it's not her nature. So she brought in a person who it is their nature. You see, when the man of spirit tells women that there's no man out there who wants to come into your life when you have two boys by two different baby daddies and maybe the father isn't around because I also believe the father isn't around for these two boys because I don't believe David would be doing what he's doing if those fathers was in when they're in those boys life that's the other part I think I don't think those fathers are providing that father figure to those boys so not only does Kim have two sons with two different men I think she's got two sons with two different men who father isn't around she wanted David in her life. She wanted David to provide some discipline to these boys. And now when David is getting the backlash, Kim is not telling the boys that this is also what I wanted. What Kim is letting happen is Kim is letting David take all the bullets. That's what she's doing. One group of men that I notice don't have a problem coming into a woman's life and playing the father figure and boy are ex-military men. They don't have a problem with it. I see it a lot. A couple of my friends have had second and third marriages. And you know the ones that worked when that ex-military man came in and gave some of my friends support with their boys. Because military men are used to raising boys. Because think about the military. Military is often a place where fatherless boys, boys who don't have discipline, boys who are fatherless or sometimes don't have family, that's where they go. So military men are used to raising boys when they come in the military. So it is not a big thing for a military man to come into a woman's life who has two boys. So ladies, if you're out there and you're single, unmarried, and you maybe you're divorced and you've got boys and you're wondering what man wants to come in and take these responsibilities or help me with some of these responsibilities, maybe you need to look at a military man. Maybe you do. But what you can't do is you can't do what Cam did. You can't invite a military man into your life and when he starts leading with his military militant stuff, then say, oh, it was nothing that I wanted. It's all him. No, 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 no. You can't do that. But let's get to the obvious about David. <laughs> David was over the top. He was absolutely over the top. He was overstepping his boundaries. He was doing way too much. So even with all what I said about him, we still got to talk about the obvious with David. And let me tell y'all, I knew right away, right away, that that mom of David's was the problem. 
I knew it right away. And you know how I knew it? Because that mama was real quick when they all first got together and they all start talking about what do they hope comes from this family or fiance. That mama was real quick to throw her own son on the bus. I said, wow, that sure was quick. That sure was quick. Now, I know we're here for some constructive criticism, but that mama hopped on it fast. And let me tell you what else I knew about that mama. She made it all about her. You see, this family or fiance was supposed to be about David, Kim, and the two of them together with the boys. Because that's really what it was about. It was about Kim's boys feeling comfortable and accepted by David and not criticized by David so that Kim, the boys, and those and David could all be a family. But the minute the mother gets here, what does the mother start talking about? The mother starts talking about her problems with David as her son. Now, we already knew that probably some of David's issues were gonna go back to the mama. But what I found interesting was, was that the mother was quick to throw David under the bus as if he was the problem. That's what I found interesting. Not that we all don't know that a lot of our traumas that we carry come from our childhood. But what I found interesting was that the mother was real quick to blame David for who he was and that she, at the time, wasn't taking any accountability how she contributed. Now, is it hard to admit as parents <laughs> that parents aren't always right? That sometimes parents have great intentions, but lousy outcomes. <laughs> can, can, can it be admitted out here? Can this get admitted that parents, you know, that, um, hey, good intentions, good intentions, but lousy, lousy outcomes. Can we admit that? And what I think about David, mother, was that she was real good at talking about the outcomes of what David was showing, that he was showing some anger, that he was showing to be too disciplined, too hard-nosed, but she wasn't taking any responsibility to how he got there. And that, to me, was a problem. The mother almost said that before David could do anything with everyone else, she wanted an apology. She sat there and said, forget about Kim, forget about Kim's sons, who are we all here for. I'm here for myself and you need to apologize to me. <laughs> that mama was a trip. But we later find out how David got this way. And we later found out it was because of the mama. And the mama finally admitted that she was her way because of her mama. Generational curses. Generational bondage. Generational parenting styles. You see? So this mama, as David starts to talk about, says he's always wanted the love of his mother, but he never had it. And he never found a way to be balanced between discipline and love. You see, I see why David was attracted to Kim because Kim was the opposite of his mother. In his mother, David found the discipline, but no love. And in Kim, he found love, but yet no discipline. So in their eyes, Kim was saying, I have a heart full of love, but I'm lacking some of that know-how of the discipline. I'm going to invite David into my life. And David says, I know how to discipline, but I'm lacking the love, and I'm going to invite Kim into my life. If David and Kim could have explained this to Kim's children, I think it would help them get on the road to healing. Because what, what they both have to recognize is but what they're both missing. One of the things I, I didn't like about the show that they missed on was we clearly went deep with David on what he was missing, but we didn't go deep with Kim on what she was missing. And I think Kim is going to need to fess up that she may not be that good with the discipline because when you can't leave your 16-year-old home for three hours with their brother who's 11 years old, something's wrong. Something about that 16-year-old you don't trust. Because at 16 years old, you should be able to stay at home with an 11-year-old at least enough time for your mama to go out on a date, okay? And if that's not happening, there's obviously some discipline missing in the house. David said he'd been in therapy since 1997, and here we are at this time, 2021, and I'm like, this is as far as you got since almost 24 years? You need a new therapist. You need, this is another thing I'm going to advocate for. I know that there's 
you know, it's no more taboo to getting therapy. Everyone should get one. But let me tell you something. If you are not making progress with the therapist you have, you need to change a therapist. I sure hope David is not with the same therapist for 24 years because for him not to have gotten to where he got with this young lady who's the counselor on the show now, that's atrocious. 24 years of therapy and you didn't get to this point where the issue is your mama. You didn't get to this point where what what you're what you're acting out, David, in your own parenting roles, even with your own kids, is you're acting out the very thing you didn't like with your mother was that she was too disciplined on you, but yet she gave you no love. David talks about the mother never showed up to any of his games. He won all these awards and accolades, but his, ne his mama never showed up. You know why? Because his mama probably was selfish. His, every time they confronted the mama on an issue, the mama always made it about her. Always made it about her. Even in the very end, when they asked that question, do you give me your blessing? Do you give us your blessing to get married? And David asked the mother, do you give me and Kim your blessing to get married? The mother still made it all about her. The mother made it all about her. And then she says, I guess I will give it to you since you did this. You said this to me. What? You supposed to be given the blessing over whether or not you think they can be a couple. They can be a family. Why is your blessing contingent upon what your son does for you? I think the mother was selfish. I think the mother was selfish when not only did she not show David love, I think she was selfish because I see it in the comments she made here at this age. It was all about her. And I think the emotions that David felt that he was not loved by his mother, I think are real emotions. And the mother has to take accountability for that. And I think she kind of did because I think in the end she realized that the way she parented David was the way that she was parented. She said her mother never told her that she loved her. Her mother never even hugged her. She didn't know anything differently, which is good. But in, no, in her realizing that she didn't know anything differently, she can now admit that, yes, I did that to you, David. I did it, and I'm sorry. So when she's coming in here, and she was in the beginning of the show demanding apologies to, from David, what she really should have been saying is she owes David an apology too. But she didn't see that. She came in once again talking about what David owed her. In the end, everybody gave him their blessing. Were they skeptical? I think so, especially the kids. I think the kids were like, we maybe can forgive, but can we forget these last four years, how we felt with you dating David? Probably not. Probably it'll always be something there, but herein is the blending of the families. Herein is the blending of the family, the different parenting styles, the different this. So the question is family or fiance, but if you're out in the world and you're dating and you have different parenting styles, this type of stuff is going to come up. And I don't believe, I know everybody wants to say that the solution is um, never as the woman, never find, never go out and you try to find, you know, a happy relationship for yourself, make it be all about your kids. But that's what's got a lot of women. That's what's got a lot of women out here by themselves, doing everything by themselves. You know, nothing's wrong with Kim wanting a little bit of help in the discipline area with her kids. Nothing's wrong with Kim wanting a partner that compliments her and can provide her that support. It's difficult trying to raise two boys, teenage black boys out here all by yourself. So this notion that Kim should not try and work with David, I don't, I don't believe it's the correct road either. I think the correct road is the one they took, which is let's try to round out these rough edges, but let's put some boundaries on it, right? Let's put some boundaries on David so that David can't go this far. But this idea that Kim also doesn't deserve any help, that Kim doesn't deserve any love, and that she should forgo any of that, even though she knows her boys need some discipline in her life, that she should continually to lead with her heart, but not lead with her head. I don't think that's good either. Because in the end, the boys actually will benefit from actually seeing two different styles, a more disciplined style of David and the more loving and caring, nurturing side of Kim. But what David can't do is impose all of his will onto the boys. 
But the boys need to see it because what I think is the boys haven't seen both sides. I know people think as a single mother, you can give your kids everything. You can't. You can't. You can't even do it in a married relationship when it's mother and father at home intact. That's part of the benefit of having a mother and father because you see two sides. You, t you see two parenting styles. You see um, two different personalities. And when you grow up, you get to, you as a child get to see the way both parents handle things. And sometimes you can pick and choose which way you like, you like better. But in the end, you get to see it. You see, when it's just the woman, there are, there's no other viewpoint. Just like David is saying with his mother, he only saw his mother's viewpoint. I don't know if the father was around for David. They didn't mention it. They, he didn't mention that, but it sounds like maybe not. Maybe the only style he had to look at was his mother. And as a result, he became his mother, which wasn't a good thing either. So I think the boys, even though they may think they don't benefit from seeing having David in our life, I think they will benefit with a different version of David. But the disciplined David in his own life, I think they will benefit from seeing that. But the disciplined David where he imposes his will and he becomes militant and authoritarian over the boys, they will resent that. They will push back on that and they actually won't receive the message. So do I give Kim and David my own blessing to get married? I do. I do. If I'm in this family and they're asking me at this moment, family or fiance, in this moment, based on what I've seen, I'm going to choose fiance. Because I think that David made good progress. I think that David realized not only how much hurt he had caused to Kim and the boys, how much hurt he had even caused to his own family, his boys. And in fact, he spent some time apologizing to Kim's boys. But what I didn't like that David didn't do was he actually should apologize to his own son. Because his own son, his own children are also victims of this parenting style. And his son talked about it. I think his son was a bit hurt that David was apologizing to Kim's sons, but he also didn't turn his own son and say, and son to you, I apologize. I think he needs to do that as well. Kim's sister at first, at first was skeptical. She was mean mugging the whole time. She did not like David in the end. I think she came around. So I'm happy about that. So in the end, if I'm part of the family, I give them my blessing with those changes. If they can do those changes, if David can keep those changes, I give my blessing because I actually believe that it will help Kim because I think Kim actually wants the help of discipline in the house. I think she actually wants, wants it in her life. And I think it will help the boys because I think the boys probably do need a bit of discipline in their life. From, what, from the little tidbits I heard, I think they probably do need a little bit more discipline in their life. And so, yes, I think, and I think that David needs more love in his life. And I think that's what Kim provides him. Kim provides him the love. She, he provides the discipline in hopefully a, a lesser dose. And I think those kids can have the love of their mother. And I think they also need a, a little dose of discipline from David. But that's it, y'all. Let me know if you watch the show, you're going to watch the show. Um, I'll see you here every time I do a new, um, episode so be sure to subscribe so you know when i review the show and you'll get the alert uh, be sure to like the video and drop down in the comments and i'll talk to y'all later bye <laughs>